This sermon content comes from Mercy Village Church located in Barbersville, West Virginia. And you can learn more at www.mercyvillage.church. About two years ago, a little over two years ago now, uh, in September of 2020, I resigned from my job as assistant associate pastor at Redemption Church in Huntington. We felt called to, to do something in Barbersville, to see a church planted here, started. We didn't know for sure what God had planned in the near term, but we knew that in the long term, that was where God wanted us to be. Um, and so we wanted to be in a place where that was a possibility that was going to be uh, supported and, and pushed forward. In October, we took the month to worship without any responsibilities. We went up to New Heights Church in, in Milton. We have friends there. We just sat in those services. Didn't have to do anything. That's kind of nice. <laughs> For a month. It was during that time that God was really working on my heart, even more so on Pastor Josh's heart, quite frankly. I, I probably would have gone away or walked away from it, at least in the near term, if Josh's elbows weren't so sharp, kept nudging me, nudging me, nudging me. But I'll never forget one day, um, we'd come home from church, we were, we had just walked into our bedroom and the windows were open, like there were screens in, but the windows were open. And my wife and I were talking and, and I don't know which one of us expressed it first, but the idea that had been circling in our minds was it feels like God is already doing something in Barbersville, like he's already doing something here. There were other people talking to us about how much they'd love to see a a church plant started here and on and on. The analogy we came up with in that moment was it felt like there was a train that was leaving the station. And that it was going to leave the station regardless, whether we were on it or not. God was going to accomplish something here, whether we were in or not. The train was leaving the station. I said, it feels like the question is, do we want to get on the train or not? And as I say those words, no lie, in the distance, we hear a train whistle go off, you know, like so common here in our area. That split second train whistle. I want to expand that imagery of a train, though, because I think we often think of a of an actual like train on the railroad tracks. But have you ever seen a train of sheep? I'm going somewhere, I promise. Here's some like, see, that's a train of sheep. We got a couple others in case you haven't seen them. Right. One more. You know what's in common, though, with all of these? It's that guy right there. The shepherd. No train of sheep goes anywhere without a shepherd to lead them where they are going. And who is our shepherd? Mercy Village Church. That's the question today. Who is our shepherd? Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us. We are His. We are His people and the sheep Of his pasture. The Lord is our shepherd. We've made it where we are because the Lord is our shepherd. Fast forward from uh, October to November, and on the very first Sunday of November, we gathered nine folks praying, preaching, singing. I pulled out these giant post it notes this week I have at my house. A couple of days we sat there and don't feel creeped out by this, but we wrote a bunch of names up there of people we were praying would be impacted by the work of Mercy Village Church. Some of y'all's names are on there. I'm sorry, but they are. We thought of you. We prayed for you. And God has done so much. By December the 24th, there were about 20 of us, maybe a few more. And God gave me probably the 
first core memory of this young church. Josh Early and I had considered calling off our Christmas Eve gathering because there was snow in the forecast. We decided to go through with it, and I'm glad we did. And we gathered and candlelight and preaching and singing. And then we walked out that night, and snow had covered the village of Barbersville like a blanket. And you know, you got this. We were across from the post office in a little building there. They had the Christmas lights up over the. It was like something out of a. Out of a movie. I felt the presence of our shepherd that night. Saying I'm with you. I'm leading you. I'm taking you and these people. All sheep somewhere. The train is on the move. And the shepherd is leading it. And countless times since then. I have felt the presence of the shepherd leading us. And I know many of you have. As well. Here's what I want us to see today in the 23rd Psalm. Our good shepherd. Who has led us where we are today. Will continue to lead us into his presence forevermore. This is our hope as individuals. And this is our hope as a church. Father today what we know not please teach us. What we are not please make us. And what we have not please give us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The 23rd is probably the most well-known of the Psalms. It's been sang. It's been sang to multiple melodies. It's been written into songs. It's been quoted, memorized. It shows up in art, pieces of artwork that sometimes look incredible and sometimes are just the kitschy things you bought at the Christian bookstore. Remember that? That was a thing. Some of y'all are old enough to remember the Christian bookstore, right? And, and it ends up on people's walls. It's a powerful psalm. Charles Spurgeon called the 23rd the pearl of the psalms. It's one of those beautiful ones that there is. Today we'll see that the 23rd psalm brings confidence, security into our feelings of lack and anxiety and instability. The 23rd Psalm brings generous renewal into our restlessness and busyness and weariness. The 23rd Psalm brings comfort into the darkest valleys of pain and death and despair. Because the 23rd Psalm brings us into the good presence of our good shepherd and good God. We need that all the time. We certainly need this. Today, verse one shows us we are led into confident security. God had that's my point today that up till now, God has led us into confident security. And this isn't just for Mercy Village Church. This is for all Christians. God, up to this point, as your good father and good shepherd has led you into confident security and he will lead you further in to confident security. And that's my prayer for us as a church, that he will lead us further in to confident security. Here's what David, the psalmist, says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It's just a sentence. It's powerful. That is a strong declaration by the psalmist David. It is both personal and it is a declaration of satisfaction. He says the Lord is my shepherd. It's personal. We don't know where David was, by the way, when he wrote the 23rd Psalm. Some of them have information about what point of his life he was in. The 23rd, we don't know. He may have wrote it while he was still in the fields as a shepherd. He may have wrote it while he was on the run from King Saul, who was trying to take his life. He may have wrote it while he was king of of Israel. He might have wrote it while he was on the throne. We don't know. That's good for us today. Because we don't have to pigeonhole the psalm into a certain circumstance or situation. David's were incredibly varied, just like yours. So if you find yourself wherever you find yourself today, on the run, in pain, waiting for something, or experiencing something beautiful, it doesn't matter. The bold proclamation that we can make as the children of God is that the Lord is my shepherd. 
The Lord is Paul Bokel's shepherd. I belong to him. If you're a Christian, you belong to him. He is your shepherd. It is personal. With confidence, we can say that in any circumstance. And belonging to God, he says boldly, is all I need to be satisfied. He says, I shall not want. Hear me, by the way. You want to be a rebel? Maybe you don't. You want to be defiant? You want to swim upstream in this culture? Lay hold of that sentence or that half of the sentence. I shall not want. Literally, what this means is I shall not be an adequate in amount or degree. The full depth and width of our satisfaction is found not in what we have, not in our circumstances or situations, but who our shepherd is. That's the point. And he says, I shall not want. Literally, the depth and width of all that I need. By the way, this should change the way you feel when you scroll through your social media feed. You should still be able to feel satisfied. Now, again, don't hear me saying that if you don't feel satisfied, you're, you're a piece of junk. And we're all a work in progress. What I'm saying is this is the type of truth that has the power to change the way you feel when you scroll through your social media feed. To change the way you feel when you watch someone else succeed instead of you. To change the way you feel when you see those advertisements or whatever it is that makes you tend to feel dissatisfied. This is the type of truth that can equip all of us to say, because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall be satisfied. In the good times and in the bad times, in abundance and in drought, I shall not want. Might we be a church that lays hold to the personal and all satisfying realities of the shepherd, our shepherd, Regardless of anything else, this church will be a success if when we come in here, we have laid out for us in front of us the realities of a God who can satisfy our the deepest longings of our soul. That is success for us. Not only are we led into confident security, we are led into generous renewal. Verses two and three. Verse two says he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. We're talking about a pasture here where the sheep can lay down, right? This would be these green pastures. Again, if you read about shepherding, the goal of the shepherd is to get his sheep to a place where the grass is so abundant that they can lay low for a while, that they can rest. That they can keep eating day after day and be satisfied. That's the idea of what David is saying. He leads me into places of deep satisfaction. He leads me into places of peace. Still waters. The idea here is a watering hole so calm and so safe that the sheep can drink without fear of the water itself or of any sort of attack from the outside, it's a safe place. And in that safe place where hunger is fed and thirst is quenched, verse 3 tells us, He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Don't miss that little nugget for His name's sake. There's a saying I've heard, God is for God, in the sense that God's primary allegiance is to his own glory and his own fame and his own name. And that's true. But what's beautiful about Christianity is that time and time again in scriptures, you read that your joy is so closely tied to God's glory that when God seeks his own glory, your joy, child of God, is a natural outcome. Why does he lead people into green pastures? Why does he lead them beside still waters? Why does he restore your soul? Why does he lead you in paths of righteousness? For his own name's sake. 
There's confidence there for the Christian because if his greatest goal is his own glory and your joy results in his glory, then you better believe he's going to get your joy just the way he gets his glory. And so he generously renews us. The the shepherd provides rest and food and drink. And when he does that, he is doing the work of restoring, renewing the soul. He's putting things back together. Some of us can testify to times where we have felt like things are shattered and broken and busted. And we have, and maybe you're there right now where you feel things are shattered and broken and busted. But there are people in this room who can testify to those moments when God has put things back together. He's restored and renewed. The shepherd provides restoration and repair for his people. And he provides all this because he knows the right paths to get you to the right places. He'll lead you in the right path, paths of righteousness. Get this, no sheep will ever be lost while following the leadership of this shepherd. You might feel like you're lost. We're about to enter into the valley of the shadow of death. Sometimes when you're there, it might feel like you're lost. But if you are following the good shepherd, you are not lost. He is taking you where he desires for you to be, which will be a place for his glory and your joy. This is our reality, Mercy Village Church. We can't go this week without at least reading a verse from Philippians, right? We've been in the letter Philippians 4, 19, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We tend to read that verse and think of material needs, and that's true. But it is not limited to material needs. The needs for rest and renewal, spiritual and emotional needs, all of your needs met through the shepherd. My God will supply all. Of your needs. Come to me, he says, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you need rest? That's where it is with the good shepherd. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Do you need a gentle and lowly voice speaking into your life? It's there. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A lot of people told me that church planting would be the hardest thing that we've ever done. It's interesting that the people who tell you that are people who have successfully planted churches. I think it's there's I think there's maybe a little bit of backdoor ego there. I don't want to accuse anybody of anything or throw shade on anybody, but they that, that seems like everybody who ever said that was a someone who had successfully planted a church. So it'll be the hardest thing you've ever done. Meaning I've done it, so I've accomplished something really Difficult. Now, that's really jaded. Don't be jaded like me. Um, But that's a jaded response. It it hasn't been the hardest thing we've ever done. Has it been difficult? Yes, it certainly has. There's been been times that this has been very, very difficult. But overall, the overall theme of the last two years for me has been renewal, satisfaction, rest. Because we're following the good shepherd. It hasn't been that way every day. I was going over my sermon with my wife yesterday and I didn't feel it in the moment. I I was struggling to believe what I'm saying here today. She'll testify. Not out loud, though. She's not allowed to tell you the whole story. Maybe just shake her head. But yeah, I'm just saying the overall theme, not every moment, not every second, not every turn, but the overall theme over the last two years has been rest and renewal and satisfaction. Not because of the church plant, but because of the shepherd who's leading us. But in that, you guys, Mercy Village Church, have been the hands and the feet of the shepherd. Bringing renewal, satisfaction, and rest. Some of us are there right now in the green pastures. Times of blessing, right? Times where you can look around at very obvious uh, milestone moments in your life and say, God is so faithful and so good and so kind. But as we prayed right before we read, some of you in this room as well, it's not always green pastures and still waters. 
Verse 4 reminds us of this reality. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, the shepherd is there. Our shepherd has led us into confident security, is leading us into confident security, leads us into generous renewal. He also leads us through the darkest valleys. Some of you, either recently or even right now, are so close to death, either in your rearview mirror of someone you deeply love, or in the future, a a fear or a worry of someone who's sick or dying. And it's, it's so close to you right now that you can taste it. Obviously, in our community this week, that's a reality. For others, it's not a literal, physical death. That's not your dark valley right now. But it's a shadowy, shadowy ravine of, of uncertainty and doubt. Marriage maybe hanging on by a thread or kids in a very difficult situation or someone in your family is being incredibly difficult or your career is uncertain or on and on, fill in the blank, whatever it might be. All of us within the past two years have been close to that shadowy valley in some way. Hear me. When God is with you in the valley... Evil cannot touch you, you have to get this, unless the shepherd allows it. It's hard to hear. You want him to protect you from evil every single time. But let me tell you what's even what you don't want at all. You know, it's like, it's hard to accept a shepherd who allows evil things to happen. But it would be even harder to accept a shepherd who can't stop evil things from happening. What, what worthiness would that shepherd have of being followed if, if every time some evil came against you, he was like, oh, I'm out of cuss, sorry, I can't help you, right? Like, that would be worse. We have an all-powerful shepherd, a strong and mighty shepherd. Sometimes evil things still happen to us. Sometimes death still Comes, pain still comes, loss still comes. Hear me today. This is my point. There is not a single thing that happens to you that your shepherd is not able to turn on its head and redeem for your joy and for your good. And I'm not saying you need to believe, you you have to believe that with all your heart right now because some of y'all are in pain. I know. But it's true. He will turn every circumstance on its head for the children of God and redeem it for your good, for his glory. That's why you can trust him in the valley of the shadow of death. You can bank on the fact that he will always protect you from anything that is not for his highest glory and your deepest joy. It's all through the Bible. Our shepherd, both saving people from evil and turning evil for good. For Joseph, the, the son who had the coat of many colors, the Dolly Parton coat, sold into slavery, in prison, all those things, and God redeemed it. it happens time and time again in Scripture. In fact, it is death, the death of our king, that is redeemed for our greatest good. Salvation. This is a theme of Scripture. I say that only to say this. The fact that you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death is not a sign that God is absent. It is a reason to believe and trust, even with gritty faith, that He is present working things out for your good. Not only that, but as I was reading about Shepherding. This is what I found out. Oftentimes, the lushest grasses 
in the most clear and beautiful waters. And real life shepherding are found where? In the valleys. We could go around this room, past the mic, to all of our regulars, our members. And so many would be able to share stories of in the darkest, deepest valleys, God serving up for them the luscious meal, the most thirst-quenching drink, even in the valleys. I don't wish the valley on anyone, but we're all going to go through them. My prayer is that we all go through them with our good shepherd. Because when he is present with us, he will give us everything we need to emerge from those valleys and to turn them for our good and our joy. The last thing, and this is our hope, he leads us into the presence of God. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Here the shepherd becomes the host. He's leading us to the place where he will welcome us into his presence intentionally, kindly, bountifully, specifically, Welcoming loved sheep as honored guests into a place of feasting. And not just feasting, but promise. Verse 6, surely, the psalmist David says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, if you noticed, starts with God and it ends with God. The Lord is my shepherd. He's present with me. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And he's all through it. This is our hope. Not as individuals, circumstances and situations that make us feel comfortable. Not as a church, any of the kind of benchmarks that people hold up as successful for a church. But are we walking in the presence of our shepherd? Is he leading us? Are we experiencing the presence of God? That is our hope. He says, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What does the good shepherd give to the sheep primarily for their satisfaction? Himself. The end game isn't the fields, the lush fields, the pastures. The end game isn't the smooth waters. The end game is is present, being present with the shepherd. Psalm 16, verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. That's what a good shepherd does. Makes known the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our satisfaction is found in the good shepherd. Now before we apply this to our church, because it's, Homecoming Sunday, two-year birthday. I want to apply it to the church, but before we do, I want to speak to those who may not know the presence of the shepherd. I don't want to take for granted just because we're in Bible Belt USA, just because you have grandparents and parents and stuff who came up in church that you know what it means to have a relationship with God. Jesus, right, That's who the psalmist is pointing to, by the way. David's not pointing to an actual shepherd in that day. He's pointing beyond to Jesus. John 10, 11. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. You see, the good shepherd, Jesus is a better shepherd than David could ever be, but he's not just a better shepherd than David, he's a better sheep than any of us could ever be. Because he was perfect. We're all like botched up sheep. You get that, right? Like uh, my mother-in-law used to raise some sheep, and there was this one, and it had like this weird fur, it's like a Himalayan sheep, but man, that thing was nasty. I mean, everything got caught in its fur. It looked like some... Rastafarian that hadn't taken a bath in about 16 years. Like, that's what the sheep looked like. It was a white sheep, but it wasn't white, right? Like, that was its original color. Not a, not a bit of white on it. 
It was mangy, dirty, filthy. That's me. That's you, apart from the good shepherd. Jesus comes, the Lamb of God. That's what John says in in chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He was the perfect sheep and the perfect shepherd. And he became the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Jesus died on the cross, the perfect Son of God, the perfect substitute for sin, made it possible by grace through faith for us to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. If you're not a Christian, it's that simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. You have no idea what that means or you have questions about what that means. I'd love to talk to you about it. Saints, two takeaways. And they're super simple. One is about looking behind us and one is about looking forward. Birthdays have that tendency, right? You kind of look at the years behind. You look at the years ahead. The older we get, the less we have to look ahead, the more we have to look at behind, whatever. I'm not saying anything. We when we look back, we look back with thankfulness that the shepherd has led us here. Here. Place that tastes like home. For many of you, I've heard that testament. You know why it tastes like home, though? Not because it feels like something that makes you comfortable in this life, but because if, Lord willing, feels like something you're longing for in the life to come. Like this place continue to feel like home for so many because of that. A place of belonging for haggard, weary, mangy sheep like me. My wife said it this way yesterday. I thought it was great. I just wrote it down verbatim. It's been a community for me when I wanted to crater. And it's been a choir for me when I wanted to rejoice. That rang true with me. The days I felt like giving up, it's been these people who have been my community when I wanted to crater. And on the days when I'm bursting with joy, it's been this community that stood beside me and sang the praises of our great God. Lives are being transformed. We don't have time to count the ways, but your lives are being transformed. My life is being transformed. The unchanging word of God and realities of Jesus are our constant. And the presence of God has not deserted us. And therefore, joy has been our theme. That's where we are. It is the good shepherd that has brought us here. And we are thankful. Personally, you can do the same thing. It doesn't just have to be through the framework of Mercy Village Church. That would be incredibly arrogant. We all, all of us who belong to God can look back and see that he has brought us certain places with deeply thankful hearts. Tomorrow, though, might we continue to hope in our shepherd to keep leading us into his presence. Community group on Wednesday, we were talking through the sermon questions. We talked about how easy it is for a church to get off course. Maybe you've been at one. uh, Maybe you haven't. Thank God if you haven't. To get off course, instead of following the good shepherd, to start like following our own intuition and our own desires, and it becomes a non-profit that's really healthy and good, maybe. It's not necessarily a church, a flock of believers following the good shepherd. Might we never lose sight of how easily it is we could get off course if we don't keep following our shepherd. Thy kingdom come. So we go with him where he leads. To this day, whenever I hear a train whistle, I'm reminded of our unstoppable shepherd. And what his plans are for the future in this, through this church, I don't know. But the last two years have been beautiful as we followed him. And we don't have any plans of doing anything else except that, following our good shepherd. 
Our good shepherd who has led us where we are today will continue to lead us into his presence forevermore. This is our hope as individuals. And this is our hope as a church. Father, thank you for leading us to where we are today. Thank you that your promise is that you will lead us home. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Might we never grow weary in following you, our good shepherd. Pain will come, yes. Loss will come, yes. Difficult times will come, yes. Might our story be one of never wavering. From walking with you, our shepherd. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to this feed wherever you listen to podcasts. We exist to experience and embody redemption and renewal in Christ alone. And we'd love for you to experience what God is doing as Jesus builds Mercy Village Church. Connect with us online at www.mercyvillage.church.